Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video we're going to do some more with user interface items and in this video we're going to create a simple side menu that can be opened and closed by clicking this button down here. Alright so let's go ahead and get started and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay so the first thing we want to do to make this side menu is make sure we're under the home tab and then click on the UI button. First we're going to add a screen GUI and then we're going to add a text button. We can move this button down to the corner of the screen. After that you can customize the button to look however you want to. So I'm just going to change a few things with it. First I'm going to change this text which is under the text section right here and then you'll just locate text and this part is where you can change the text. So I'm just going to say open menu and then I'm going to make the text a little bit larger and then for the background color let's change that to red. Okay next we're going to be adding a frame. You can resize this to whatever shape you want. For the frame here I'm going to make a few changes over in the appearance section. In the style section I'm going to change it from custom to drop shadow. And then inside the frame here we're going to add a couple more elements. So if you click on the plus sign, the first thing we're going to add is a text label. And go ahead and resize it so that it fits inside the frame. For the text label you can go ahead and change it to whatever you want. I'm going to change the text to make it a little bit larger. And then if there's any additional changes you want to make, please feel free to. Also inside the frame, we're going to add a couple buttons. If you're going to have more than one button, then what I would do first is just customize that one button. And then once you make all the changes that you want to make, then go ahead and just duplicate it to make the other buttons. So we'll just make a couple changes with this button here. So for the text, I'm just going to say button 1. Let's make the text a little bit larger. And let's go ahead and change the background color too. Over here in the Explore section, we're going to rename this to Button 1. Okay, and now that I finished with the customization for this button, I'm just going to make a copy of it by pressing Control D. And then you can drag it to the new location. And now this one is going to be Button 2. And then we'll make one more copy of this, drag it down a little bit, and this will be button 3. Now all we have to do is just update the labels on them. So this one will update to button 2. And finally this one will update to button 3. What we have so far for our setup is we have a screen GUI. Inside the screen GUI we have a frame and a text button, which is this one down here. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and rename this one to open. So like I was saying, inside the screen GUI we have a frame and a button. And then inside the frame here we have three different buttons and a text label. It's important that these items are inside the frame so that everything opens together. Now we're going to go ahead and add a script onto this frame here. So we're going to be adding a local script. The first thing we're going to say is local open button is going to be equal to script dot parent dot parent dot open. Next we're going to say local frame is equal to script dot parent after that we're going to define a variable so we're going to say local not open and we're going to set that equal to true then in the beginning we're going to set the frames visibility equal to false by saying frame dot visible equals false this will just make sure that menu is not open when the player spawns in the game and it only opens when they click the button alright after that we're going to create a function that opens and closes this frame whenever the button is clicked so we're going to say local function 
and we'll say open menu for the name. Inside, we're going to say if not open. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say not open is equal to false because at that point the menu would be open. And then we're going to say frame dot visible equals true. And this is the part here that actually makes the frame show up. Next, we're going to say else not open is equal to true. And then frame dot visible is equal to false. And then down here at the bottom, what we need to say is open button dot mouse button one click colon connect and then we're connecting this open menu function okay and that's all there is to it so if the frame is not visible on the screen and the user clicks on the button then it's going to make the frame visible and if the frame is visible on the screen and the user clicks on the button then it's going to make it invisible again all right let's go ahead and take a look and make sure we didn't make any mistakes so right now my frame is not visible if i click on this button here then it shows up, and if I click on the button again, it closes. One thing that you'll need to keep in mind whenever you're designing user interface items is that it's not going to always look the same depending on the screen size. So let me just go ahead and show you an example. So under here, you can view your game on different screens. This is how your game would look on an iPhone X, and you can see your menu is kind of jumbled up. And you can try some different screens just to see how it looks. But in general, you notice that it doesn't seem to line up correctly. What you can do to fix that is download a plugin, and the plugin that you need to get is this one right here, Auto Scale GUI. You can just press install, and then it'll install it into Studio for you. Once you install it, then you'll see it in the plugin section up here. And what you want to do for each item of your user interface is just go under the size section here and click on the scale button. So we'll start with the frame here. So I clicked on it over in the Explorer menu. I'm going to go into plugins. For the size section, I'm going to press scale. Then I'm going to go for button 1, plugins, size section, press scale. And you notice it moved things just a little bit, so you may have to readjust things once you convert it. But we're just going to go through and do that for all the different items. And then we'll just readjust things if we need to. One additional thing you might want to do for anything that has text on it is go under the text section and select the box next to text scaled. And now if we take a look at our user interface on some different screens, we see that things show up a little bit better. One thing that I'll need to fix though is down here for the open menu button. I haven't selected that option yet, so you can see it kind of extends past the button. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So for the open menu, we'll just go down to the text section and select the box here. Now if we go back and look at it, everything fits inside the button. And if we take a look at some different screens, then everything shows up like it should. Okay, and before we end with this video, let me go ahead and show you how you can set up code for the other buttons. So if we head back under our script here, what we'll need to do is create a reference for each button. So we'll say local button1 is going to be equal to script.parent dot button one and we'll just copy this and make the changes that we need to so this will be button two and button three and I'll change it here as well and then we'll just set up some functions for each one so we'll say local function and we'll just call this button one and for now we'll just say print and then button one was clicked. And we'll just copy this two more times. This will be button two and button three. And we'll just make some changes. And then down here at the bottom, we'll say button one dot mouse button one click colon connect. 
and then we'll connect the function. Okay, copy and paste. And we'll change this to two, this one to three. And this will run function two and function three. All right, let's go ahead and test it out. Okay, so now if I open my menu, I click button one, it says button one was clicked, button two was clicked, and button three was clicked. So if you have your own custom code that you wanna add for these buttons here, then you can add it inside the corresponding function. All right, so this is gonna be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.